All right, so um, nanotechnology. Um, nano is re referring to very small things. In fact, um, if you want the exact uh, definition of it, it's something times 10 to the minus nine. Uh, the prefix is nano. So like you can have a millimeter, for example, milli is a thousandth, which is that, 10 to the minus three. Uh, nano is 10 to the minus nine, the symbol is N. And we're talking about the size of particles here, so it's nanometers. You could have nanograms as well if you wanted, but we're talking about nanometers. Um, if I wrote that out, it would be um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that many meters. To give you an idea, uh, the size of one atom is probably about um, a tenth of a nanometer, roughly. So you could fit 10 atoms into the size of a nanometer. So we're talking about not necessarily individual particles. It might be a kind of blob of particles like that. But in at least one dimension, one direction, um, it's in the nanometer kind of range. So perhaps 10 nanometers. That's the, it's just to give you a rough idea um, of the, the sort of size that we're talking about. Um, what do they use them for? Some uh, nanotechnology we're quite familiar with already. For example, zinc oxide is um, a very common chemical to be used in sunblock. And the tiny particles of, of zinc oxide in the cream um, help to prevent um, damage to the skin. So if you see people with this kind of white cream on the noses, particularly in things like cricket, you see it. Um, it's often zinc oxide. And that's using nanoparticles. And it's also used commonly in packaging. So if you are packaging up food, um, you can have nanoparticles in there and they do things like um, you can actually put antibodies in the film which will kill off bacteria. Um, there are some types that um, if you expose them to oxygen, they will change colour. So if you had a packet of food and the wrapping had changed colour, you'd know that oxygen had got in, you'd know that you'd um, got damaged somewhere to your, your packaging. Um, you can also use it fruit. Um, bizarrely, when fruit are ripening, they give off gases, things like ethene, for example, uh, and that can change the colour of these nanoparticles as well. So you can tell if your fruit is, is ripe or not, or is ripening. So th they do have some common uses um, already. What's so special about the, the size of them? Um, weirdly enough, particles, when you, you break them down into smaller sizes, start to have different properties. So sometimes when you break things down in, into very small particles, they start to, for example, conduct electricity, where if they were in big chunks, they wouldn't normally do. Right, they don't conduct electricity. Um, they can perhaps become, um, allow light to pass through them. So in very small particles, um, light can pass through, whereas if it was a solid block of something, it, it would be opaque, you couldn't get the light to go through. So you have these different properties. Why are they different? Potentially, I would possibly think it's something to do with surface area. Now, I'm not going to do this in three dimensions, but if I took a block like that with, with four squares on it, the, the area, if you like, the perimeter of this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. If I took the same size block, but I broke it apart, the um, surface area, if you like, I know it's not in 3D, but the perimeter of it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, one, fifteen. 16. So you can see that by breaking something apart, I expose more of it. And if this was a three-dimensional block rather than uh, the 2D one, you've increased the surface area that's available. Okay, uh, and that's that's why we think it may nanoparticles may react in different ways. Now, the specific example given in the book is to do with silver. And silver, it's a red one. Up. Uh, goodness me. Put sodium down there, silver, um, AG, argentum. It's been known for a long time that silver has antibacterial properties. So people, um, if you could afford it, used to drink out of um, silver goblets and use silver cutlery and things. Um, they didn't know why at the time, but it turns out that silver can disrupt um, microorganisms. Um, now, of course, most people wouldn't use pure silver nowadays because it's quite expensive, but using very small particles of it, nanoparticles, um, will still have these antibacterial effects. Um, what happens is we have here's a bacterium and we get nanoparticle sized blobs of silver so there's maybe a few um, silver atoms there. They're absorbed, taken into the bacterium and once in there it forms silver ions, Ag+. Okay. The reason I wrote sodium before, I was thinking about this, um, 
the silver ion is a similar size to a sodium ion and sodium ions are used a lot in um, in cells and so what the silver does is um, it, it, the cell gets confused and it starts to use the, the silver instead of the sodium but the silver isn't going to do the same thing as the sodium it's just the same size and it ends up disrupting the internal mechanism of the um, bacteria and it gets destroyed so that's how it's actually doing it now you can also instead of using um, pure silver use silver salts which is basically silver and something else so it could be um, silver nitrate for example and what happens when you dissolve this you get the silver ions uh, you had before the problem is that silver ions although once they're in the cell they damage it silver ions don't easily go into the cell in fact what happens is these silver ions tend to react and grab onto something else that's floating around in the solution some of the molecule and that makes it difficult to get them inside the cell so if you're going to use silver salts you've got to use a much much higher concentration in order to make sure it works and that can be a problem because you're then using high concentrations of these um, nanoparticles um, and this is where the the concern i suppose with nanotechnology is what happens to all these tiny particles um, when for example we throw them away in landfill they don't just disappear do they end up for example in um, water that we drink are we all taking in extra silver particles or extra nanoparticles of other things we don't know we don't know what the long-term effects are it might be nothing it might be terrible it might be somewhere in between so people are trending to be a little bit cautious with this um, nanotechnology trying to make sure that we have um, proper checks done lastly on this one place you might come across nanotechnology uh, next time you're in a supermarket or a shop clothes shop have a look at the socks and you'll probably find that some of the socks, there's a sock in case you know what a sock looked like, some of them it will say on the label that it's got silver in them. And they do actually have silver particles or um, silver nanoparticles in there. Why? It disrupts the bacteria that would cause the smell of sweaty feet. And it's quite a common thing now for silver to be impregnated in things like socks.